When I first came to L.A., a group of women for lunch. It turned out to be a lunch at Ma Maison where they were comparing rings and hairdressers. So imagine my horror. And then along came women in film. I stood there at the Beverly Hilton, and this was a landmark moment. They declared that there would be an organization that women could join and be a part of. There was about 10 women sitting around a table. That was the seeds of women in film. They started the conversation about the roles of women in film. There were these iconic women there, Sherry Lansing and Barbara Boyle. And women in film was there to say, we're going to fight for each other, we're going to institutionalize that fight and we're not going to give up. I was very lucky that I had two brothers who started throwing balls at me when I was six years old and playing sports. As a kid growing up in Ohio, I had a very strong mother and two sisters. And we used to play pioneer lady and navigate the forest. I'm not afraid to take risks. My mother was a fearless producer. I would sit in story meetings where she's giving notes or in the editing room with the editors and the directors and think, oh my God, how's she ever gonna get a second husband? And she frankly was more worried about a second movie and she did get a second husband. You could have a really rough and tumble game, kneeing each other, elbowing each other. When it was over, you all went out for a slice of pizza and everybody got along. You're always in the wrong place. Everything blows up in your face. I have two cell phones, and it, they were big phones because this was a while ago. And on one line, the studio is saying, you're running over, you're going to be over. What do you guys, you know, go get with all your guys because I was working with all men and then another line's going, and then Flash, it's my son, and I'm like, guilt just is, uh, guilt becomes me. A movie that I had worked on as a studio executive was The Fugitive, and they announced the premiere date, and it was the same night as the kindergarten sleepover. And I looked at that calendar, and I looked at it, and I looked at it, and I thought, what do I do? My daughter had been looking forward to it for six months. I called Harrison Ford and said, would he mind telling Warner Brothers that he was unavailable that night. And guess what he did? I call myself kind of a blue collar producer. I grew up in a blue collar Italian Brooklyn kind of family. And you know, I get up, I go to work, I stay at work all day till everybody else leaves. I love doing it. There's an endless flow of material that I'm interested in. Producing films for anybody is the craziest job. You have to believe in your own script. You have to believe that your gut is truer than theirs. You know, to be the person that's holding everything together is really the kind of uber definition of the job. Studios like the producer to be the studio's partner. I know the director likes the producer to be the director's partner. It's a lonely job. You can't complain to the crew. You can't complain to the director. You shouldn't complain to the studio. It is your job to be very honest. I'm sort of convinced that I'm a good audience member. The key for me to have been going and going like a little bunny has been humor. I never get stuck in one dilemma for too long. The easiest thing in the world for anybody who's a financer is to say no. It's so safe. Treat a no like a delayed yes. Go to the next person. There's some other group here that's going to love my script. You have to keep pushing the rock up the hill. Make movies, make television for your own demographic, make it for yourself. Work hard and work smart. Whatever the job requires, you do it. I'd done so many things, having gone from actress to agent to producer, joined forces with Tom Cruise. Being a woman in every role, you're treated differently as an actress than you might be as a producer, than you might be as an agent. I was a camera woman, and a lot of men didn't want to see me as a camera woman, and that really hurt. I got over it, and I learned to let things roll off my back. By the time I started producing, I had learned the technique of just considering it their problem. I had blinders on. I wasn't aware that it was just me and Lauren Deborah. When you make a movie, you're a family. To have Paula around every day to bounce things off of is next to perfect. Maybe women can be the leaders in humanizing the workplace. You know, after all these years, Greg Silverman said I should direct the movie that I was producing. Hell yeah. I'm proud to be a feminist. Being a feminist doesn't mean that you're angry. You can be very feminine feminist. I think women have a hard time with unfairness. When the ball is taken from them, they don't realize their job is to take the ball back. We have to become comfortable with that because we're playing with boys. We have to reach out to our sisters 
standing on the same ledge and jump all together to our future rather than competing with each other for the one slot that exists. You know what puts me in a good mood is when I see an email from Women in Film and it says job listings for women. I wish I could be there, but I am working. I want to thank my sons, Jesse and Zachary, and my extraordinary husband, Rick Nasita. He has supported his woman in film. Thank you, guys. I want to thank Women of Film. You've been incredible. You have helped grow the women in this business. We have a place to go. We have a place to network. It's wonderful to have received this Crystal Award and be the daughter of someone who received it. Thank you, Women in Film. Thank you, Women in Film, for honoring my sisters and myself. We are thrilled. Thank you, Women in Film, for everything that you've done for all of us. Thank you, Women in Film, not only for what's been done in the past, but thank you for the promise for the future. Thank you. Women in Film is a wonderful organization. I hope you will give and give generously to help support more women in front of and behind the cameras. Thank you all very, very much.